Hello everyone, it's Dan here and welcome to the Ultimate Realistic Drawing Guide, the complete edition. If you are subscribed and are a regular viewer of the content I create, then you will most likely know that I have previously put each part of this guide out there in individual sections. But I thought it would be a good idea and a lot more convenient to have all of them back to back in one video, taking us through the complete drawing process. What you are seeing now is an overall drawing time lapse. In this complete edition we break down the whole process of this drawing into separate sections and then look at them all in depth, learning new techniques and methods of drawing. Our reference image and the example we use for no apparent reason is this image of Will Smith, but the drawing process used in this guide can apply to any drawing that you set out to create. This is a realistic drawing so the first thing you need to know is that it requires a lot of patience and attention. With that being said we are going to take a look at the equipment and supplies we will need for creating a realistic drawing. Now there's a lot of materials and equipment out there but you don't need all of it. In front of me here is all the equipment I use for when I draw and so first of all let me go through everything here. So for the paper that I draw on I use Bristol board and it's a thick card that has a really smooth drawing surface. I really recommend using this stuff because you can apply a lot of pressure to it and it's not going to tear or bleed through onto the other side. You can use cartridge paper, I've used that before, but you don't want to use anything like printer paper or anything like that because it's not good quality for drawing on. So next up we have pencils and there are a lot of different brands out there. I've only ever used Faber-Castell or Derwent. They seem to be perfectly fine to use but you should get a full set of them so you have a range of different grades to work with. Pencil grades work like this. I mainly use maybe a, a 2H for sketching outlines and then a 2B onwards for drawing. For the darker areas I use something like a 7B. Now we have this mechanical pencil which is a Uniball Kuru Toga. It's probably one of the best pieces of equipment I use. I actually used to create drawings only using this one pencil. Um, the leads I use in this are 2B 0.5mm Pentel leads. This is really useful in all areas of drawing. I'd definitely get a mechanical pencil even if it isn't this one. They are really convenient because you don't have to sharpen them or anything and you can be really accurate with it. Okay so next we have erasers and the main one I tend to use is this which is a mono zero eraser. It's good because you can be really accurate with what you erase and it's also useful for making highlights in the drawing. I also have a bigger eraser and I used to have a putty eraser but now I prefer just using these two things instead. Then we have blending stumps for blending areas of the drawing. You can get various sizes of these. Now it might be worth me mentioning this which is a white Posca pen. I don't use it often but it's useful for sometimes creating highlights and whiter areas in the drawing. And finally I use a ruler sometimes and a sharpener. Most of this stuff you might already have. Um, you don't need anything really expensive to create good drawings. It's how you use what is available. So now that we have covered the drawing supplies that we will be using, it's time to actually start drawing. To start off let's take a look at a few methods on how to actually start outlining the drawing and getting the proportions down correctly. So first of all we need something to draw and for the purpose of this video and for no apparent reason let's use this image of Will Smith. This is probably something I should talk about first which is the reference. You want to get a copy of what it is you are drawing. It could be a digital copy so you have your image on screen in front of you or you could print it out like I have done here. I actually recommend having a printout of something you are drawing. It's easier if you are a beginner and also it's useful for one of the methods which we will be using later called the grid method. So get your reference image printed out. Another piece of advice that might make it easier for you is if you convert the image into grayscale if it isn't already. This will make it easier for you to create it in pencil later as well. So that's how I'm going to approach this drawing in this video. With a style such as realistic drawing it does help for your reference image to be of high quality so you can carry that detail across into the drawing. One thing with drawing like this is it's basically recreating the image as realistic as possible and it's a form of working that requires a lot of attention to detail. 
So we have this image here next to our piece of paper. This is Bristol board that I am drawing on. Um, now we have a few ways we could go about starting this drawing. The first one is going in freehand and judging the proportions by sketching them in. If you do that it might be a little off and it can sometimes take away the whole idea of it looking realistic. If you do a lot of freehand drawing you will naturally become better at it and be able to sketch things in more accurately. I sometimes go about starting a drawing like that but for the purpose of this guide what I want us to use is the grid method. And the grid method is where we draw a grid onto the reference image using a ruler and then we replicate the same grid onto our piece of paper here. So get the ruler and you just draw a grid as big or as small as you want. Usually I go for an inch by inch square but make sure you draw it really lightly. Use a 4H pencil or something that won't stand out too much but so you can still see it. I always start by drawing the grid on the reference first, line it up the exact same on the drawing and then just replicate it across. So I'm going to go ahead and let this play out and then we can take a look at it once it's finished. So at the end we should have two identical grids, one on the reference and one on the drawing. Some people don't like using a grid, I don't use it often but for the purpose of this drawing guide I think it's a really useful tool and you should always make the most out of every method you have. So here we go, this is what we will be using to help outline our drawing. Now I'm going to go ahead and start outlining Will Smith's face here. And you can see that I'm always using the grid to help me work out where my lines go. You want to almost treat each section of this grid as its own area and draw the outlines a section at a time. Here I'm firstly outlining his head and then once we have that down I'll start outlining the facial features. We have a big shadow down the side of his face and under the neck so I'll just roughly mark that out on the paper as well. Okay so there we go we have an outlined drawing here and you can go ahead and erase the grid lines now but I usually keep them. When we start adding in some pencil work it usually covers the grid lines anyways but that pretty much covers the outlines and proportions section of this guide. Making use of an easy method like the grid is a great way to plan out your drawings accurately. In this one we are going to start working into the drawing, looking more in depth at how to start laying down some realistic qualities that involve things like light and shadow and also various turns that we're going to have to produce. So here we are, in the last one we created the grid and also created our outlines from our reference image of Will Smith and now that all the proportions are pretty much planned out we will take it further and start working into some areas of the face. Now I quickly just want to point out that everyone has their own working process that suits them and that they are comfortable with and that's something you'll eventually develop the more you draw. So my process usually is to start rendering and working into individual areas separately and sort of work my way around the drawing. So usually I start with the eyes and I think once you have drawn in the eyes you can work onwards from that point. On this reference image we have a lot of dark areas and shadows but then we also have lighter areas so it does make more sense to work with the lighter areas first and then we can always make them darker if we have to. But how I'm going to start here is just by working into one of the eyes and I usually start by laying down those really solid outlines, mainly the darker areas around the pupil and even some of the eyebrow above it. Now it's a bit of a commitment going straight into creating more solid outlines and shading right away but you slowly start to get an idea of the different turns and if we already have the darker areas down then we can work off those as well. So right now I'm studying our reference image and still even using the grid. Our drawing is the same size as the reference so that makes it a lot easier because we are just replicating areas. So here I'm slowly trying to form the shape of the eye. I'm using more of a soft pencil to get those darker marks. It's really essential that you keep looking back and forth from your reference image and really take your time placing down your pencil marks exactly as it looks in the image. We have created really accurate outlines already so things will look like they should anyways and it's just a matter of creating texture and starting to work into it. I've decided to call this section shadow light and turns because we are basically making different turns in regards to the lighter and darker areas. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. 
One thing you need to remember is to observe what you are drawing and always take your time. Okay, so now I have more of this eye drawn here, and I did all of this up to this point with a 2B pencil. Now I'm going to take a sharper, maybe a 5B, and you have to make sure that it's really sharp because I'm going to start with one of the eyebrows. This is more or less repeating the same process by looking at the reference image and very carefully seeing whereabouts on the grid each individual hair is placed. And yes, a lot of the time to get the best result you have to draw each hair separately until we get further into the eyebrow where it slowly fades into solid black but the shape still remains. So here we go, we have drawn the eyebrow and now we have pretty much got the whole eye and the eyebrow area worked into. I'm going to repeat the same process on the opposite side of the face, except this time there is more of a shadow to take note of, and this eyebrow is more of a solid area, so I'm going to do the same and just fade the lines into each other to create that shape. So over on this eye you can see that the shadow comes into it and that it's casted under this shadow that goes all the way down the side of the face. Now I'm going to draw the start of that on the eye but not fully start laying down that shadow yet. Okay, here we go, we have both the eyes drawn in and now I'm going to start working into this section with different pencils and create some realistic tones. Now I'm going to start off with maybe a light 2H pencil, so I know I'm not going to get any dark pencil marks. And in this area around his eyes, it's naturally quite light anyways. What we do have is we have small gradients of tones where I can change pencils to a softer size and to start trying to fade into it and create those areas with more shadow. Also in some places we have a bit of a skin texture, but don't worry too much about that yet, just work into it really lightly because we can come back to that later. So we have created some pretty realistic looking eyes here and now it's a similar process that I'm going to use to work into the nose and the lips. Again starting with the darker shadow areas, there is a lot of shadow under the nose so I'll draw that in and then take a lighter pencil for the rest.
I've worked into the lips as well in a similar way but lips tend to have a texture to them so I've really just created the darker areas and left most of that for later. So we currently have a lot of very permanent dark shadows and facial features drawn out and now we need to start moving onwards with the overall face of Will Smith here. So we have our outlines and we know where everything will need to go, it's just a matter of laying down some pencil and forming the skin, in which of course we will be shading and blending to try and get a nice smooth surface. The whole point of this is just to get some nice base turns and then eventually when we get to that stage we will be working into these base layers and making those realistic skin textures. So here I'm going to take a 2B pencil, you could also go for a lighter pencil here because we are only creating really light marks but I'll just see how it goes using a 2B. I'm always looking at the reference image and trying to see the best direction for me to create the pencil strokes. We want a smooth finish so I'm making sure I create lines all in the same direction in regards to our reference image. For example the forehead will have horizontal lines whereas under the eyes and around the cheeks there are a lot more shape and structure to it so we will be curving the direction of our lines to go along with how the cheeks and things are formed. I started with the forehead. It's probably the easiest section because it's more or less a flatter surface so naturally the lines will be created horizontally but notice that the forehead isn't just a flat 2D area it's actually got a shape to it where it curves at either side of the face like most people's heads tend to do but we do need to do this with the pencil if we want it to look realistic obviously people don't tend to have flat 2D heads so we're not going to be drawing any straight lines so I'm going to speed it up here and talk a bit more in depth about blending and the shading to the right side of the forehead we meet the shadow and so when we get closer to that side I'm applying just a little more pressure so we can get those darker marks. Always feel free to change the pencils and see what you think is easier to create these different turns but what we really want is a gradual transition from the different turns and then it's this lighter to darker gradient. The main thing to focus on is the amount of pressure you apply and also the direction of your pencil strokes. You'll probably notice that there's a lot of skin texture and light areas that I seem to be ignoring right now and that's because we will be working on this again later. But for now we are just laying down a base layer of pencil. Now that we have this forehead section done I'm going to take a blending stump and gently start smoothing out and blending this area. So where we had shaded the right side of the forehead and where we have these different pencil turns as I go over that and blend it it almost fades it into each other and looks a lot more natural. That's the main shading and blending process that we will be doing for the base layer of pencil. So now I've blended the forehead and now I'm going to work into other areas of the face. It's pretty much a similar process. I'm always following the direction of the skin turns on the reference image and that's really important. Remember that you can always make areas more darker if needs be. Just start by lightly shading and getting the right feel for certain elements of the face. I'm also using a piece of paper to rest on so that I don't smudge the drawing as I go along and work. So we have the lighter side of the face finished but on the other side and below and around the neck we have this solid black shadow and to do this we use the same process except when we approach this shadow we'll be applying a lot more pressure onto the page. I also recommend using a soft pencil like a 5B, also don't worry too much about making it look like a solid black, we can go over this a lot more and make it darker. Especially under the neck where the majority is just this solid black shadow, there is this large area to colour so you might not be able to achieve those solid black straight away. What we can do is we can take even a softer pencil and by creating really small strokes and still applying a lot of pressure we can get something close to a solid black. This is why some people use charcoal in their drawings because you can get those deep black turns but we are focusing on pencil drawing in this guide but it's still probably worth me saying that sometimes when we create these darker areas using a pencil like this it can reflect light easier and it can sometimes take away some of the drawings impact but it's the best result we can get and it's perfectly fine in terms of realistic pencil drawing.
So I've pretty much covered a lot of the face now with a base layer and of course there isn't any texture placed over this yet. I also worked into the ears a little bit and I'm going to go ahead now and colour in the hair. Now I'm going to cover the majority of this in a solid black even though on the reference image we have small little areas where light is hitting it and creating these smaller lighter marks. When I get to this point in the hair I just leave tiny little gaps and fill the rest in. This should be pretty straightforward, thankfully Will Smith's hair is kind of simple. Finally we have things coming together and looking more realistic, we have a base layer and pencil shading down and we also have blended it to create a smooth gradient so that was the main priority in this section. But in this video we are going to be creating skin texture which can prove to be quite difficult but I'm going to break it down and show you the best way to create a skin texture that looks realistic. So be prepared because this is the part of the drawing process that can take a long time but it's also one of the most important. In the last video we created the base layer of pencil and blended it into a smooth surface. Now we are going to be working on top of that and really taking our time to bring out some realistic looking skin. The reason I think this is one of the most challenging things to do is because it can change a lot. For example one area of the face might be different from the others but we will approach it as we go along and get straight into it. Now I'm going to really focus in on one area at a time and like in the last video I'm going to start with the forehead. Taking a close look at the reference image I can see that on the left side here there isn't nearly as much texture to the skin as there is on the right side and then in the middle here we have a lot of light and that creates a different texture so we will have to try and work out the best way to draw this. And it can happen quite frequently where light and shadow hitting the skin can really change the way it appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the left where there isn't much texture but there is this lighter section here and that takes up most of the centre of the forehead so I'm going to take an eraser. This is a Mono Zero Micro Eraser that's really useful for this and we'll be using it a lot throughout this process. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing some of the base layer that we did last time and do it in small sections and by doing this it almost creates a bit of a texture in itself. So I've created some lighter areas on the forehead and now I'm going to take a hard pencil. We don't want to create any dark marks just yet but with this pencil I'm going to really start studying the reference and looking at all the skin pores and different textures on the skin. They're almost like small dots so I'm creating a similar pattern on the forehead. Remember to always refer to the reference and take your time with where you are placing these pencil marks. You can keep using the eraser and making those highlights as well as you go along. So you can see here that I'm making really small pencil marks around the erased areas to try and create some skin pores. So here I've put it into real time for a second so you can see how slow the process is. It's really about taking your time and studying what you are drawing. Right, so now I have a lighter section of the forehead drawn in and it looks a lot better than when it was just the base layer. 
We also have some mana forehead creases that we have to make note of, and so draw them in a little darker than the rest of the texture. So now moving on to the right side of the forehead, this is where we can see that there's a lot of detail and texture to create, and there's a big contrast between the lighter creases and the shadows between the pores of the skin, so it makes sense to start creating some small highlights, again using the eraser and taking away small bits of the pencil. When we have a lot of this done then I'm going to take a 2H pencil again, making sure it's really sharp, I'm going to work in between these highlights, and it's almost as if I'm creating these creases in the skin alongside these lighter parts. Once that is done, get a darker 2B, or maybe even a 5B, but make sure it's sharp and start creating the same kind of marks, but this time do it a little bit darker. I'm always creating these marks in terms of the reference by the way, so keep referring to that. That's probably why it's such a long process, because if you want it as realistic as possible, then you're going to be taking a lot of time studying the image. Seeing as there is a shadow on this side of the face, I use a darker pencil so that the skin texture would be darker as well. So I've finally finished with this side and most of the forehead. It's sometimes helpful if you step back and look at the drawing from a different angle and see if everything is looking as good as you want it. But this is looking fine and we can always make adjustments later if we need to. But what I'm going to do now is move on to the nose. And a lot of the time, and I think it's the same with this image, is the nose tends to hit a lot of light. You can see on the bridge of the nose here where we will have to do some erasing. It's not too much but making these highlights is really important. So we'll be taking a lighter pencil and working into that, and then we take a soft pencil. But a lot of this nose area is smooth, and it has a light skin tone too, so we don't need to create that much texture. Except down the right side of the nose, where it goes from the eye, and we have this sort of shadow. We are still pretty much using the same process, except on the nose, the skin texture is a little different, and on the sides of the nose, it goes in a different direction, so make sure to take that into consideration when you are drawing. So now that that's done I'm going to move on to the cheeks and we have a similar texture to the forehead so it's pretty much the same process. I'm going to start by cleaning up these edges and going over these shadows a bit more. On this side of the face it's more smoothed out from the edge and as we get closer inwards towards the nose and into the lighter area we start to see a bit more of a texture. I hope this isn't speeded up too fast and you can still see what I'm doing. The real time footage is really long, like I said it's a slow process, but if some footage that isn't speeded up so much would be useful, then I can go ahead and create a side video and upload some more of that. Just let me know and maybe leave a comment or something down below because the whole point and purpose of these guides are for me to try and give you some advice and help you out a little bit. I've made the skin texture darker as we get to the edge of the face near the area that's under a shadow, so just by changing the pressure I apply onto the paper with the pencil, I can get different shades and tones. So 
So now that that's out of the way we are going to try and finish these lips and it's a bit of a different texture that we will have to produce. You can see here on his top lip and mostly on his bottom lip that there's a bit of highlight and so I'm going to take a 2H pencil and try and draw around these highlighted areas. All I'm really doing here is observing the image and looking at the tiny creases in his lips because in between them there's the lighter areas so we draw in these creases and that will bring them out as well. So most of his top lip here has a darker tone compared to the rest of the skin and so get a soft pencil and start working into this by drawing in some of these marks which are naturally just decreases in the lip but in the reference image there are more or less just marks where we have shadow and light. What I want you to do is whenever something appears really complicated or intricate like this then really study it and treat it as if it's just a load of marks that you are going to have to reproduce with the pencil. We already had most of the dark shadows on this lip drawn so I've just filled in the rest. You can always use the eraser again to bring out some of them highlights. So the bottom lip is a lot lighter than the top and we can see a lot more creases in the lip. It's definitely a lot more clearer and looks like the common texture you usually see when drawing lips. So I'm going to draw in these creases first, trying to keep other areas blank because we can use them as the highlights after this. Lower down this lip before we hit the dark shadow, the lines go a bit smaller and are a lot tighter together. Just make sure the pencil is really sharp and creating these lines with up and down pencil strokes should be able to get that effect. Afterwards we can take the eraser and then bring out them highlights even more. It's really just a matter of studying carefully where you place the pencil marks in regards to what it appears like in the reference image. Okay there we go, we have the lips finished now, I'm most likely going to do a side tutorial focusing on drawing lips but usually when we draw them from a reference like this then it's really the reference that we use and it's pretty much a matter of what suits it best. Now moving over to the right side of the face we have this very bold shadow and on our reference we can see that it merges into the skin texture and creates this almost like a gradient. So we have solid black until it gets to the point where we start seeing the skin texture and I'm going to start at this point and draw some really dark marks into that shadow. You want to use a soft pencil because we need to almost match the same turns as the shadow in order for it to stand out. I've also erased some areas of the shadow and filled it in with more of a texture. Once we have a texture laid down then we can extend this shadow over it by just going over these pencil marks with a darker pencil. All the way through this drawing we are using pretty much the same process we did at the start with the forehead. We are always making highlights with the eraser to create skin pores and then working into them again with the pencil. I always suggest working from light to dark with this type of stuff. This side of the face was definitely challenging because of that shadow. I was trying to blend the texture I was creating from the shadow into the rest of the face as well. So this isn't looking too bad, I've got most of it done but I'll go ahead and finish this chin area 
and it's the same process we used on the right side in terms of the shadow. We need to basically create a darker skin texture the closer we are to that shadow. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing when it's speeded up like this. Like I said earlier, if you want some real time footage, then I'll try to put that in another video. So I didn't want to speed it up too fast so you could still see what I'm doing, but I'm just using the same process we have used throughout all of this. I'm going to be doing another skin texture guide where I'll break down this technique and work with a few more examples. Okay we are almost done, I'm just going to fill in the neck. The majority of this is cast under a dark shadow, but closer to the left as it gets a bit into the lighter area, we can start to see more of a texture. Skin texture can appear differently depending on the age of the person you are drawing. For instance, the skin seems to have more texture to it if the person tends to be more older and the younger they are it seems to be more smoother. The texture we are creating here is sort of in between them both. I'll probably end up taking a blending stump again and smoothing out some of the areas. So finally that's pretty much all of the skin texture finished now. It's definitely the longest part of the drawing process. It had taken me a few hours just to get to this stage. But it's not how long it takes, it's just how it looks at the end that matters and this is the stage where it's good to review everything and to step back from the whole drawing and compare it to the reference just to see if there's anything you have missed or to make any adjustments. I hope you understood the methods I explained in this video, it is a really complicated process but it's probably one of the most important parts. Welcome to what most likely is the last part of this realistic drawing guide, or at least it's the last part of this drawing where we have gone through the whole process, and our example drawing here of Will Smith is near enough finished, so we need to draw his jumper, his piece of clothing, and we will be doing that in this section. So we have most of it completed, and at the end I might just make some minor adjustments and review the drawing. In terms of clothing however we will just be looking at creating the details and the texture of this jumper and that's pretty straightforward, again it's just a case of creating marks with the pencil and looking at the lighter and darker areas. Here on the reference image we do have that shadow coming over onto this right side again. So firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the edge of the jumper. We actually have this grid here as well still so we can use that to help us. So most of this is left white and we have this other part of the jumper so I'm going to sketch this part in around his neck. I'm going to start with this part because it has a very prominent pattern and texture to it and I'm also going to start by lightly creating a similar pattern to what it's like on the reference image with these lines of fabric going around his neck and they do gradually get darker the closer we get to the shadow on the right. But like usual I'm starting off with a light pencil and following it round. Once that's done I'm going to take a softer pencil like a 2B and work into it a little bit more. Making some of this pattern darker I'm also going to use a very soft 5B to create a shadow to the right and this shadow covers pretty much all of the right side of this section.
So we have this area of the jumper finished and looking at the rest of the fabric here it seems to have these vertical lines all over, most likely from the stitching or texture of this jumper, but another thing to notice is how these lines follow the shape of the creases and the shadows on the clothing, so like here on the reference we have them coming down and bending with the flow of the fabric. So I'm going to start by taking a light 2H pencil and drawing these in. In some areas of the fabric it's so light that we don't see these lines so much so we'll just leave that space blank but keep referring to our reference image and seeing where we need to draw these lines. You don't actually have to worry about being too accurate when it comes to clothing or at least not as accurate as we was when we was creating a skin texture and things like that. I will most likely be doing a tutorial that goes more in depth in drawing fabrics and clothing but we are just using the reference to judge what we need to draw here. So we have all these lines drawn in and in some areas they curve with the folds of the clothing and with the creases so they're not just vertical lines they do have a bit of shape to them but now I'm going to use a 2B pencil to make these darker areas on the jumper and there's no specific way to go about doing this I'm just studying the reference looking at where we see shadows and the darker lines and then going over them and drawing them in. On the left side there's not so much to do compared to the right side, there's a lot more shadow on that side. So remember to always keep your pencil sharpened as well because it does help you be a lot more accurate when you're creating the details in the texture. But finally once you have finished this then you can take an eraser if you need to bring out any lighter areas. But once that's done this pretty much completes this whole jumper and clothing section. And now this is the part where we can step back and we can look at the drawing as a whole, put it side by side with the reference and make some subtle adjustments. When I talk about making last minute adjustments it's nothing major, it's just maybe working into an area a bit more or making some areas darker. I was unsure whether to add a background to this but I think I'm going to leave it blank. It makes our portrait here stand out more on the paper. So there we go, that pretty much concludes the whole drawing process and this realistic drawing guide. As we come to an end I want to say thank you for watching and if you've made it this far then congratulations. I hope that you've at least learned something from this video and I'll be doing a lot more how to draw videos and more content relating to drawing. So feel free to subscribe and keep up to date with all that. The content I create appeals to anyone who is passionate about being creative. So with that being said, I look forward to creating more in the future and thank you for watching.